Hi everyone, that is Jerome. Today we are going to talk about ApeCoin and why I actually aped into the token while everyone was trying to short at the bottom. So I think it's a very good use case of, you know, trying to understand things from a flow perspective and, you know, not really trying to, to look beyond what crypto Twitter are actually thinking, saying. Um, and it's a very good uh, learning case. So I just wanted to make this video real quick. Um, so ApeCoin, I think, is very interesting because if you look back at the NFT space, um, the NFT mania that started, you know, in probably summer of last year, summer of 2021, was something that was driven by retail. Because it is a very easy narrative to understand, it, it, it actually, you know, resonated a lot with, with a lot of uh, smaller portfolios. So people started, you know, jumping into NFTs, trying to make money. So people would, you know, spend half an ETH, one ETH, two ETH, maybe on some on some items trying to, you know, find the next board ape. But one other thing that you have to realize is that even though the market was very vibrant from the retail perspective, it was absolutely not for institutionals and big institutional institutionals for institutionals. They have been very, very passive. Uh, on the NFT space. And one of the reason why is that it's very illiquid. For, for, for portfolios that are, you know, managing hundreds of millions of dollars, why would they actually try to buy a collection uh, of, you know, one or two ETH in order to make a few thousand dollars here and there, right? It doesn't really make sense because you cannot make large bets into the NFT space. So you have a lot of fund managers that actually uh, have been, you know, waiting and left aside from the NFT market because they have no vehicle to actually be able to uh, invest into the NFTs in a very convenient way. For example, if you're managing hundreds of millions of dollars, you want to be able to throw a million dollar, two million, three million into uh, an NFT uh, and, 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 and have the ability to get out very easily. But right now, given the current market structure, you cannot actually do something like this. So illiquidity is a big issue for institutionals wanting to come into the NFT space. You've also realized that, you know, the big funds that were actually buying NFTs last year were the, they were concentrating into, you know, high price collection because Otherwise, it actually not worth their time. So once you do realize this, and this is a narrative that uh, we have been watching in my premium Discord group, um, we have been watching the NFT fractionalization because whenever you do have um, uh, liquidity uh, uh, coming into a market or the ability to, to, to bring liquidity, uh, you have very, very much uh, a lot of use cases. So if you look at uh, the um, the uh, the premium channel here, we have been, I've created something called um, fractionalized NFT uh, in order to uh, start discussing about that. And in February, 2022, we were already talking about fractionalization of, of NFTs. And I said, I'd love to place directional bet on Ape collection without having to buy one. Um, uh, if you think about it, then NFT fractionalization is the next logical step and it creates so much more use case and you'll have more efficient price discovery and hence this liquidity as a result and other use cases such as borrow and lending and create speculative market. So um, I was highlighting that this, you know, this thing specifically fractionalization is what will bring multi-billion dollar to the nft space i believe so once you understand that and you you put that in the context of um we've been actually talking about it a lot uh, last few days I, i've been you know walking through uh, my trade with uh, a lot of um a lot of the members but once you do understand that uh you you realize that ape 
is sort of different from other other tokens because when you go through Twitter, a lot of people will tell, oh, it looks like the next ENS or the next DYDX or uh, super rare or whatever token that actually um, that actually you know did an airdrop but has collapsed since then. The thing is, what you have to realize is that Ape board Basie Basie collection is probably the Bitcoin on NFT. Trying to compare ENS, DYDX, and Super Rare to something like ApeCoin is completely different. The level of attention that ApeCoin gets compared to those unknown tokens um, is, is day and night. Normies do have no idea what ENS, DYDX, or Super Rare are. But everybody that has been involved within the NFT space knows what Bored Ape actually is. So it's the flagship and it, it's almost like the, the, uh, the Bitcoin of the NFT once again. So I've actually written a thread yesterday by saying, and we're gonna go through it um, uh, uh, a little bit. So yesterday I wrote, uh, before the listing, a few hours before the listing, I said on ApeCoin, I wouldn't underestimate the first few hours, days of listing. Remember that one of the big struggles of NFTs was to provide decent liquidity for larger players to get involved. So you probably want to think in terms of money flow and allocation rather than just pure valuation. And this is where I think a lot of traders that try to short this token because it was up too much were actually failing to understand. They did not actually understand that oh, this board ape board ape token would essentially catalyze so much flow and from the people and institutional that actually want to have an exposure to the NFT space but didn't have the ability to do to do so beforehand. So they tried to short because they look at the at the valuation and they say, oh it's too expensive. I've got to short it. And then they get short squeezed. So you might you might think the project brand has zero utility, but highly liquid NFT can create a whole new cases. Uh, the spot liquidity will most likely be very thin upon listing, with only fourteen percent allocation to the lunch um, to lunch contributor, uh, of which a fraction only is unlocked. Meanwhile, Basie Macy holders claiming tokens will most likely not sell their tokens day one because the way you got to think about it is that the people who own those assets generally don't own a lot and this is the collection that essentially carried them throughout the whole nft uh, summer so you got to realize that they are very attached and very likely not really wanting to sell some of their winners so this is what we what we essentially did and, uh, and, and you had to recognize that essentially it was more about uh, allow, creating a token that allows a lot of people and institutional to put their money into. Right now, if you look at actually the APE, um, the APE uh, token inside the, um, in the uh, FTX platform, it's, it's, it's trading hundreds of millions right look it's trading a billion dollar in volume right here it's trading a billion dollar billion point two over the last 24 hours and it started a listing at 12 yesterday so it's actually um it's created if you want to get in a million dollar two million it's super super easy so this is illustrating the point that i was actually um uh, making but essentially yesterday the way we played it in the in the premium room uh, so i myself started shorting at around 13 dollars um, i shorted ape at around um 13 i believe yeah 13 13 12 13 12 dollars i started shorting i covered at uh, nine dollars probably eight and a half and then once it started building its position because I knew people would, would start of, you know, short it, uh, start, you know, hedging and things like this. So it would be normal for people to actually, you know, sell their the tokens that they claim uh, and start, you know, bringing selling pressure. But once we get into the seven and a half range, 
eight range I started loading uh, seven and a half range I started loading uh, into board a token thinking that the people that were actually trying to short at the bottom would get squeezed um, so let me remove this a little bit so we got in around probably a seven and a half probably around here added a little bit added this morning here and essentially this morning I've, I was you know taking profit a little bit into this um, up move so if you ask me if right now is a good time to continue buying ape it's harder to say because you know the token is up almost 100 percent since my entry point um, and it's um, it's uh, it's all about the risk management right if you want to be to buy the token right now i would wait for you know a base to form and then uh, manage your risk around that the, the, remember that the the thing that you want to uh, manage first is your risk. Don't try to go to go all in uh, at the top. You'll end up buying at the top here, uh, where I actually took some profits. Uh, I started selling above 15, uh, as I thought that people would be, you know, uh, getting squeezed. And when you see a volume like this, a huge volume, you can be sure that this move, especially reaching the upper bands like this, the deviation, is a uh, short squeeze driven and this creates a lot of liquidity for actually larger players to be taking profit so um, I'm trying to teach a lot of those concepts into the premium channel so if you do want to join uh, please check the link in the description down below we're still a pretty small group I would say so you have the opportunity to come in and um, and um, ask a lot of questions. I spend a lot of time trying to uh, to answer questions. So feel free to join if you want to to learn. This is not a. I want to emphasize that this is not a trading signal room. This is mostly dedicated for those that really want to spend the time into learning a skill and you know trying to seize those type of opportunities, um, trying to read between the lines and make the um, the effort of actually you know doing a lot of research because if you think that this was luck um, I'll show you the whole the whole analysis that we did um, I was yesterday before the the, 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 the listing I was actually you know um, laying out the investment thesis here uh, you got to think in terms of money flow rather than pure valuation are the successful tokens we want to do the same um, uh, liquidity will create new use cases then we went through the tokenomics trying to understand how much we're circulating so it's all about understanding those small details and understanding that um, the market will be very thin on day one could be thin on the offer side day one unless they have market maker liquidity which is probably not that much so we go into very technical things um, that I've learned from, you know, trading at, at my hedge funds and years of investing and 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 um, and trading. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much. Um, if you want to to to, to join us, feel free. Uh, check out the link. Uh, we'll be very happy to to have you there. Um, yeah, easy narrative plus uh, easy narrative plus narrative I've prepared for plus network growth purse plus people stub stubborn short not understanding the flow equals i like so uh, i was targeting 20 plus and um, we'll see how i want to manage the trade going forward uh, i've taken some profits a little bit but that was um, that was a really really good trade overall so thank you so much for watching that was more of an on-the-go video that i wanted to share uh, on apecoin hope you did you do enjoy this type of video let me know in the comments if you want me to do more um, videos like this and I will try to do so. All right guys, thank you so much. That was Jerome and until next time, bye-bye.